so guys we actually just wanted to talk to you about like veganism crazy vegans how to go vegan what products we miss the most never normally talk about veganism just on your channel chit chat it's like a mukbang with your one singular coffee out of a typhoo tea mug yes please sponsor us <laughs> Like new to veganism and you're like freaking out because you think it's really difficult to give up certain things you don't have to instantly be vegan overnight it took me months and months to actually go vegan like i went vegan whenever i was in the house but if i would go out to a restaurant or something i would order like i don't know like a vegetarian lasagna which obviously has cheese in it or i would order like a big potato with salad and it would come with like potato salad and coleslaw um and things obviously that had mayonnaise in it and i would eat it anyway and i didn't really like you know i did that for months before i went vegan um and i also used all the products that were tested on animals for months and months before or, like you know whenever i was like transitioning and you also took like months to go vegan yeah i kept eating cheese for ages like i just called myself vegetarian but i didn't drink milk at home and if i went there for coffee or something i would just either get a black or get yeah. almond milk or soy milk or something like that and i would eat vegan stuff you know, maybe like half the time, but occasionally I would eat cheese or something like that. Or if I was in yeah. somewhere, the only vegetarian food, I'd be like, okay, I'll just get that. I think like the best advice we can give you is probably if you're thinking of going vegan, don't force yourself to like do it overnight. Some people do it overnight and it works out fine for them. But like if you try and be vegan and then you slip up or something like that, don't just give up. Just like realize that that's part of it. Like you've been eating animal products your whole entire life. Like it's not easy to just change things around. Um, but I would recommend that you start by making your meals in the house vegan. And then when you go to restaurants, maybe eat vegetarian foods. It's pretty easy to give up meat because you can get vegetarian food like everywhere. You can get like pizza, you know, with like vegetables and cheese on it and stuff when you go out like or you know just ve being vegetarian is pretty easy so i would say like start off being vegan in the house and then when you go out places like if there's no vegan option like settle for the vegetarian until you get like on your feet like there's no point like trying to force yourself into something especially if you want to make it like a lifestyle that you're gonna do for the rest of your life you know what i mean yeah think of it that way essentially it doesn't matter if it takes you like maybe even a year to yeah. actually make the change or even if you only ever go to the point where you're eating vegan foods in the house and vegetarian when you're out or whatever, um, like that's fine as well. Like it's all about doing what works for you. Like there's too many militant vegans that say, oh, you have to be, you know, 100% vegan all the time and all of that. And like, we believe that we don't want to eat animal products, but at the same time, like even a reduction in the amount of animal products people are eating really, really helps. It'll help the environment. It's more ethical. It's healthier. Um, so, you know, just do your best. Like if you can't be vegan, don't think that the opposite is to have to eat animal products at every single meal. Like you can find somewhere in the middle that works for you. But I definitely think in 2017, like it's easy. It is easy to be vegan everywhere. Like we're not just saying that like, we, You'd be surprised. Yeah. Maybe like every supermarket in the UK, every supermarket that I've been to in Germany, uh, you can get plenty of vegan food. Yeah, that's and that's why when people ask like, what's the one non-vegan product that you miss the most? Like it's difficult to answer because all the substitutes exist. Like we have a freezer that has like ice cream and um, vegan chicken nuggets and stuff and they all taste the same. Like they taste yeah. exactly the same. So yeah, it's well, easier than you think. One thing you said, which actually kind of surprised me, you said like the only non-vegan thing that you kept eating for a while after you first started like trying to go vegan was mayonnaise, which I find surprising. But it's because mayonnaise is in like coleslaw and potato salad. Okay, and that, that makes more sense. Yeah, and I was but a big fan of coleslaw, like a really big fan. Mayonnaise on its own, no. Like I cannot tell the difference between the good vegan mayos, like say vegan A's. Oh, I know, the yeah. Brand one. <laughs> It's very, very good. I think it's at least as nice as like Hellman's or anything that you would get from the shop. In the US, actually, Hellman's now sell vegan mayo. <laughs> Fun fact. Yeah. They don't call it mayo though, because they sued some people for calling their vegan mayo mayo. <laughs> Whenever I went vegan like three years ago, I don't think that there was vegan mayonnaise like floating around as easily as there is now, which is something like is yeah, really, know. really weird to me. When I first went vegan, I was faced with like so much hostili hostility. Yeah, um, and people being like, what are you doing? That's so unhealthy. And like, I didn't know anyone who was vegan. There wasn't vegan substitutes really in the shops. Like there was plant milk and things like that, but there was nowhere near as much stuff as there is now. Um, so it's just so amazing to see how, like in the short space of time since I went vegan, like three years, there is so much stuff. Like when we lived in Belfast, um, 
like for four years, there wasn't that many vegan stuff. And then whenever I was in my final year of university, things started popping up. There was, you know, new vegan businesses like Sarah's World Fair and stuff. And she actually sells her products in the Students' Union in Queens now. And um, Queens started stocking all of the cliff bars, like just so cool mm -hmm. that things started changing. And when we went back at Christmas, there was like so many new places like that vegan cafe and what's the other one's called? Like IHO or something. And I think so, yeah. Yeah, there's more vegan, there's just, it's popping up everywhere like it's a good business idea as well like even if you're not vegan like get like people are getting in on the game just like Hellman's brought out their vegan mayonnaise and stuff because they realize that there is a demand for these products and like a lot of people say like if everyone started eating vegan that like people would go out of business but they wouldn't because businesses adapt <coughs> like all businesses care about is making money and they will start making vegan products if the demand is there which is what they're doing. That's exactly what happens. I mean, the yeah. butter that I use is made by Unilever. Yeah. Also, that's example. another thing. Some people say, oh, you can't buy anything that's made by like Unilever and, and stuff like that. And I think that like, honestly, like mm. you have to find where you're, you want to draw your own like ethical line. Like don't follow to anyone else. Yeah. Like it probably would bother me if I like read into it, but we haven't really like looked up that, that well, much. Like I think of it this way. Um, I feel like if you start criticizing or everything that say like a business does or something like that, then you would find it very difficult to get anything done. I know. Where exactly like, do you draw the line with that one? Like, because that's like people saying they don't buy from non-vegan businesses, but then they go and do their shop in Tesco, and you're like, Tesco sell meat as well. They have like a meat deli counter, yeah, so yeah, that's you know you need to draw your line somewhere, and it's all about like what works for you, like. Or. Another interesting example of this, I remember um, there is a falafel restaurant in Belfast just called Falafel and I saw a post on their Facebook page, like I can't remember when it was, but it was a while ago and they were trying to do like meat free Fridays or something like that and like giving people a discount on all the vegetarian food they sold, you know, like falafel, which is obviously vegan as well. Yeah. And someone like commented and like was complaining about it. Who, someone who appeared to be vegetarian was complaining about it saying like yeah well you guys sell like horrible slaughtered byproducts the rest of the week you know how can you do this you guys are such hypocrites blah, 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 blah. Well, why would you do that that's so stupid that's like so counterproductive <laughs> i know some people take it too far like um yeah i would just say like support businesses who are selling vegan products because if you don't then they're not going to sell the vegan products anymore. They're just going to think the vegans are crazy. I seen something on Facebook actually the other day and it was this cheese place. Um, I think it was in Canada or something. And they put up a post and I don't know how it ended up on my timeline, but it was like, um, it was like, we've just started this page and we have a one star rating because all these vegans like flocked to our Facebook page and started giving us really bad reviews because it's a cheese company. And that, that kind of behavior just makes people look crazy. Like, why would you do that? Like, you know, I know that it's not a vegan company, but that doesn't mean that you have to give it like one star. Like, I think that that's so like petty and like just not the right attitude to have. Yeah, commerce is absolutely not. Like, if you're watching this and you're someone who is someone who <coughs> is very like, I think if you're new to veganism, it's very difficult not to be like a petty vegan or whatever because you live your whole life like in this like it's like a bubble where you don't really think about what's going on with animals or the environment or anything, and then you find out all this information and suddenly you're like. You know, you tell your parents, your friends or whatever, and they don't want to know about it. And it's very difficult to not be like, like, what is wrong with you? Like, you're so annoying. Like, it's really like you do get this anger inside of you when you first go vegan because you're like, why is no one listening to me? Like, you know, you find out this information, you change your life around and then you tell the people the information and they just don't give a shit. But as time goes on, you realize like not everyone wants to change and also a lot of people just don't understand um, and that's perfectly okay you cannot like burn all your bridges with people that's not how you get through to people you get through to people like by being understanding and treating them with kindness that's how you make people change um not by being hateful towards them that just makes them think vegans are crazy i never want to be one of those vegans and also veganism to me at least is about reducing harm to um, the suffering of animals and humans are animals too it doesn't make any sense to make life miserable for other humans yeah you have to be kind so guys thank you for joining us for this little chit chat i would love to talk to you in the comments let me know your thoughts below are you vegan are you non-vegan we love you watching this channel anyway um we're in no means like <laughs> we're no means like exclusive to vegans at all we definitely definitely want to get everyone on board just change your lifestyle um learn about the ethics a bit more and like you know just become healthier and happier like that's our main goal
my mingle that you're here too so oh and just to make the comments interesting donald trump brexit <laughs> thanks for watching guys bye bye